Hi guys, Sean here with SLG. We're going to show you the Turbo Lamic Mechatronics kit today and how to install it into your 8HP. This works on almost every 8HP. If you order our kit, you're going to get your potting compound, the actual Turbo Lamic adapting board that we're going to be soldering in, and then a cover. If you've extracted your mechanism, your mechatronics, You'll need a few basic tools to make this happen. You'll need a couple rotary tools. Obviously you can have it in one tool, but you will need some kind of burr to grind down a couple plastic rivets. And then a cutoff wheel, because we're going to be cutting open a cover that's made of stainless steel. You're also going to need a soldering iron, multimeter, just a few simple snips. A screwdriver is helpful and some flux and then alcohol to final clean your soldered in board after. So our first step after taking the mechatronics out of the transmission is to cut open. So we're gonna head out to the shop because it makes a mess. So we're out in the shop and you can remove this connector first. I don't actually need this connector. So if you wanna keep it, that is fine. If you wanna ship it, you're getting back your exact mech. If we do your modification. So the first step after removing that connector is to grind down these four rivet heads. They're not going to be reused so just don't cut into the cover too deep. So at this point I'm going to take it over to a blow gun and just kind of blow it off get the plastic off it. The next step will be to pry open the cover and this whole top will pop out. We got our mechatronics cleaned off, no more plastic. Basically you want to start right here, get a nice thin screwdriver and just twist it. And we're gonna work all the way around while maintaining everything off because there's quite a few clips that we'll wanna relatch as you go around this. That cover comes off, you'll have a bunch more oil and stuff underneath. Try and send them to us as dry as you can so they don't leak in the box you're shipping. This piece will no longer be reused, it can be thrown out. Try and get it as dry as possible because next we're cutting metal, so the less oil, the less dust will stick to it. For our next part, we're going to be cutting off this top cover. You actually want to cut right on the radius of the corner so that you leave this wall and that'll help it hold the epoxy we're going to be putting in later. So one other thing to mention is when you're cutting into this, try not to get the wheel too deep into it. The pins that we're going to be soldering to are right under this outer perimeter. So we'll start cutting. You have to go all the way around. One more thing to mention is in the corners, you wanna be careful that you don't cut a V into it since the wheel's round, it's gonna go past. So I just try and cut mostly through and we'll just break the thinner steel with the screwdriver when prying it off. And just kinda of peel it off and then we'll use that other rotary tool to deburr the edge because there's a whole bunch of metal. You're gonna get all sorts of metal inside here. Not a big deal, we'll blow it out. Make sure that there's nothing hiding under any of the pins because they're all mushroom shaped, so things can hide underneath them. It isn't world ending if you nick a few pins because we have to clean the tops of them off anyway. Just make sure not to hit them too hard because they can bend. After this, we'll blow this off again, brake clean it, clean it out the best we can. You can get 
break clean in here, you're not gonna hurt anything. And then we will go back to my office and cut all these wires out and start soldering in your board. So our next step is going to be removing these wires so that we'll be able to place our board on top of these pins. Basically I start at the center clipping them out. Some of them are broke loose already because they got hit by the rotary tool. Not a big deal. I just work around the outside prying them up so I can grab them with my fingers after. You don't need to remove this board going to be potted in. It doesn't serve any purpose anymore. You can clean it out if you want, but it's just extra time. So for the next part, it's nice to have these flush cuts where the blade edge goes all the way to the bottom because I like to use them to scrape off the wire. That way it's nice and flat. And then we have to clean all these off. Some of the pins won't be used, but clean all the wire off so it doesn't go to anything else in short. Also try and be cleanly, because like I said earlier, these little pins are mushroom shaped, so stuff can go underneath them. So if you cut something off tiny, try and take it out immediately so it doesn't have a chance to get somewhere where you can't extract it. Make sure the little nubs are gone that the rotary tool left on some of them when it touched it. And as I said earlier, make sure <clears throat> you don't lose that little nub underneath. Getting these little corner crowns off is important. Try and get as much off as possible because it'll hold the board up. There's also one up here that I already removed. At this point we want to make sure that there's nothing underneath. You can see from the side to make sure that there's no pieces. If you want to go a step further you can use your multimeter to verify that the pin isn't grounded to the case indicating that there's something underneath it. This looks pretty good. You can also use a compressor to blow out any final dust, although I would make sure your multimeter check is the last check before you start soldering. So at this point, after you verified everything is perfectly clean and nothing's touching any of your pins, you can place your board in here and then we'll add the flux and it should lay perfectly flat. There is a little bit of wiggle room. Sometimes it can help if you push it one way or the other to make better contact, even out the gaps so you don't have to bridge much when you're soldering. Now we can start soldering once the iron heats up. So to start off, I like to do three points, usually toward the ends, because it can flex when it cools. And you can just pick three random pins. I'm not selecting anything in particular. You want to make sure you're applying a slight amount of pressure down so that everything sits flat because that'll help you with soldering. Now that we got a solid, we can go around the perimeter and solder all of the pins. You want to make sure you got a nice ball of solder that contacts both of the sides 100%, otherwise it could lose some conductivity.
careful if you get these little solder balls to pick them out because just like the pieces from earlier you don't want them to get under the pins and short them out and with that now it's time to clean out all the flux and any little solder balls that may have settled in places I'm just using a little bit of 91% isopropyl alcohol to remove the flux. So once it's clean, do a final inspection of your solder joints. Make sure that they're fully connected everywhere you need them to be. Final step will be making sure that none of our pins are touching the case. So this looks good. And now we can pot this in with our potting compound. And our final step is propping this up on a nice level surface, water glass or wine glass, whatever works great. It's right on the bottom. Using your potting compound, it has the self-mixing straw. I usually start at the perimeter and then work toward the center. You're not going to use the entire syringe. The stuff is quite thin, so if you cut your corners too deep, make sure you use tape or something to hold the potting compound in because it does not dry quick, so it will run through that crack. Then this is going to have to sit at least overnight, 24 hours is better. And for the next couple of hours, you can take a lighter or a torch and just burn off any bubbles that form on the top. Just check it from time to time, it'll make it dry nicer. Don't add too much heat, you can ruin the glue. Okay guys, it's been over eight hours. Full cure is in 24, but now the epoxy is hard enough that it won't hinder assembly. We're gonna place our cover over top direction doesn't matter. Final top goes on. Make sure you snap this in to the top cover before you crimp everything back down. We don't have to worry about the rivets that we drilled out. Everything else will hold this cover together just fine inside your transmission. A couple of cleaning points to note. These couple of sections are magnetic so they will collect extra metal from when you cut it apart so make sure you scrape all that off with a microfiber or something. And with that you can put this back inside your transmission and it's ready to go.